Who wants to play some Monopoly? I know I do. I'll tell you what, I love playing Monopoly. Some of you might know that. And uh, those that don't, I'm always open for a game. But one reason why I love to play Monopoly is because you cannot play it without people. I know some of my board game friends look down on it because the game is a little dicey. It is a bit of a game of chance, but it is not all about chance at all. Because you can't play Monopoly without people, and Monopoly is all about making deals. All right. So as we play, as many of you know, you roll dice, move your little pieces around the board. I love to be the top hat. You buy up properties, and if you get three of the same color, then you can develop them. You can build houses. You can make more money from that, but you need the complete set. In order to get those sets, you need to make trades with people. Well, there are a few spaces that you don't want to land on. Most of these spaces are pretty good, but of course, if someone else owns a property, you don't want to land on that. And there's one other place that most people don't want to land on. And they don't want to land on it in real life, too. And that is the go-to-jail space. Of course, if you have to go directly to jail, you end up stuck in here, and you have to pay $50. Or you can roll three times if you get lucky. Uh, but I'll tell you what, in my own playing, that is the place where I want to be once the game starts to develop. And the reason that I want to be in jail is because it is safe there. And I can still collect money. I can still collect money from St. Charles Place, take, uh, send down my little guy who's just visiting, and I say, hey, could you collect money from me from St. Charles Place and bring it back? It's just a short walk. Oh, that was such a good trade that we made earlier for Pennsylvania Avenue. Gotcha there. Uh, but in all honesty, I think a lot of us might feel like we are in jail right now. Now, we uh, might be joined with people we love, with our wonderful spouses, our children, uh, sometimes our parents, and uh, that is really nice, uh, but it can also feel a bit tight sometimes. But the bottom line is, when you're in jail, what is something that you can't do? You don't have freedom. You don't have freedom in the way that we sense it. We, we're not free to go wherever we want. We're not free to congregate. And it can be very hard. It can be very lonely. But I find strength, honestly, during this time in reading scripture. And I am inspired because in these scriptures, my strength is not derived from the superficial freedom that I might have. It's really derived from the freedom that I have found in Christ Jesus. And this freedom is so important because it is independent of my circumstances. This freedom is given from God. And the Apostle Paul really understood this. The Apostle Paul was a person who, after he was witness uh, to Christ, after he saw Jesus, he started the early church, really, along with the other disciples. But he especially went out to different churches around Greece, around people who uh, weren't a part of, uh, of the uh, Jewish movement. And as he was doing so, he got in trouble with some of the local authorities. And so they sent him to jail which was terrible. I mean, he, he suffered quite a bit uh, on the sake, for the sake of the gospel. But he didn't lose heart. And I want to read something that he wrote from jail in Philippians. This is Philippians 4, 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the uh, King James Version. The NIV, which I'm reading from, says, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. And the idea is that uh, Paul can get through this. Paul can really embrace the circumstance that he is a part of, even being in jail, because he is there on account of the greater good. He is sacrificing a superficial freedom for a greater freedom in God. And he can do this, and he can have the strength to live fully, whether things are going really well or whether things are really not going well from a worldly point of view. 
because he prays daily. He asks Christ to guide him, and he feels God's power through him because he knows he's uh, really working towards God's will. And this is exemplified also through the story of Jesus himself. As you are watching this, it is probably just after Easter, and we observed the time where Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples. He was crucified on the cross on account of our own sin and our mistakes. But hope was not all lost. He gave his life on our behalf, but he also demonstrated the ultimate hope that faith gives us, and he conquered death. And so through all this, when Paul was in prison, when he was writing these words, he trusted the truth of that, that Christ rose above death itself. So even circumstance where you're in prison, where you feel trapped, where you can't go anywhere, he knew that a greater freedom awaited. And I want to reassure you of that. We will get through this. You will be able to leave your house. But as things get harder, as people that you know get sick, some, some of us might know people who pass away at this time, and it's incredibly painful because you might not be able to see them. You might not be able to have that sort of closure. And that breaks my heart, and I really am scared of this. Um, but I know that I can get through it, that you can get through it if you trust in God and follow God's will because you have to understand that God has something greater planned for us who trust in him, who have that faith, and who follow that will. And I sincerely want you to reach out to me. I know that some of you have already uh, on, a, on a small level, but feel free to share with me things that are weighing on your heart or things that you want us to pray for. And I really want to pour more of myself in that as I'm at home uh, because I want to make sure that you uh, feel that power and strength too. I love you all. I care for you deeply. I miss you all greatly. And I hope to be able to play Monopoly with you soon. And I swear I will uh, be more enlightened in how I make those deals. I won't be quite as pushy. Um, but I really look forward to hearing from you uh, no matter what. Just share this with me. I love you all. We'll see you later. Bye.